Good morning and welcome to today's webinar from Aram. My name is Mark Buckley and I'll be your host today. This webinar is titled How, to, How Do Your Digital and Voice Collection Strategies Stack Up Against Your Peers? I'll now hand you across to today's presenters, Russell Robinson from Aram and Jaco Snyman from Sigma Connected. Gentlemen, over to you. Thanks very much, Mark. Um, good morning, good afternoon, uh, wherever you wherever you are in the world. Uh, thank you for for joining uh, this this uh, this day this this presentation where we can uh, walk through some um, to give you a little bit of background. Walk walk you through some uh, survey results uh, from some work that we've been doing with with Sigma. Uh, we've gone out to the market uh, across different continents. Um, We've had about 30 plus different responses from, from our survey around integrating digital and, and, and voice um, interactions uh, for, for collections. Uh, we're gonna walk you through a, a snippet of some of the result, results, but then later on you'll get uh, in the presentation, we'll show you uh, how to get access to the, to the full re report and uh, potentially uh, participate. Uh, to give you a little bit of background on Aram, so we're uh, collections and revenue experts. Uh, we work with our clients uh, to pre prevent and resolve uh, problem debt with their, with their customers. Um, Aram's been helping organizations for 23 years uh, acro across uh, 20 global uh, territories. Uh, we provide fiercely independent advice. So we work uh, with a number of clients and we work with a number of vendors and technology providers in the market um, that, that um, uh, are a fit for the particular engagement that we're working on. Um, uh, personally, I've been working in uh, digital transformation now for, for 20 years. I, I joined Aram uh, a year ago to head up the digital practice. Um, I was co-founder of a company called Telrock and, and ran that business for, for 15 years. Uh, after that, I was the um, EMEA uh, director for the digital business at an organization called FICO uh, for four years. I'll pass you over to uh, Yako for your introduction. Thank you, Russell. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Yako Sneeman. I'm the Managing Director of McLaren Credit Services. That's our standalone DCA within the Sigma Connected group. Um, Sigma Connected is a provider of outsourced contacts, center services, business process outsourcing, training, um, and consulting services as well as DCA services. I think we've experienced tremendous growth in the last uh, four years in particular, and we continue to expand our reach across territories and, and industries. I think our expertise cover the whole uh, customer life cycle from customer acquisition to customer service to collections to specialized vulnerability customer support services in particular our reach out product um, as well as DCA services we've got over 4,000 employees across the UK South Africa and um, and Australia and we service our UK clients uh, seamlessly either from from the UK from our Birmingham or Redditch offices uh, full working from home solutions or blended across the UK and and offshore locations um, we also do offshore for customer service and uh, collections for at scale for UK FCA regulated entities I think for, with Sigma, I think uh, we truly believe that people connect with people, so that forms the cornerstone of our engagements with clients, customers, and also internally with colleagues. Uh, in terms of myself, I've been in the financial services industry in particular for over 20 years with a deep uh, specialist uh, knowledge of uh, retail banking and consumer finance in, in particular. I think before joining Sigma, um, I was... Uh, Chief Operating Officer, as well as then transitioning into Chief Transformation Officer for BNP Paribas Personal Finance in the UK. And I've got a real passion for digital transformation, but with a human touch. Brilliant. Thank you, Yako. Um, I'll move to uh, full screen now so uh, we can share share the content. Um, so. Uh, to give you uh, to kick off and really give you um, a, an overview of, of one of the one of the data points that, that that came through. So in the in the survey we asked um, 
uh, uh, just under 20 questions of, of different different topics across uh, digital and, and uh, integration of digital with with uh, human operations and, and uh, customer treatments, customer preferences, and um, the list goes on. Uh, one of the questions we asked was around, um, do you capture the customer's communication uh, and channel preferences um, and 69% and of, the, of the respondents, so you've got uh, 20 plus organizations came back and said, uh, we do capture uh, customer communication channel preferences. And that, that can clearly be uh, uh, stated. So, you know, in relation to GDPR and, and, and other requirements um, where a, a customer will actually state that they would like communication over uh, SMS or via post or, or a phone call um, and then you know being able to utilize that in the communication strategy but then there's also uh, which is a, a huge topic and many organizations working on it in, in different ways but then the inferred um, communication uh, and channel preferences so that could include things like uh, the type of words that people respond to the type of tonality in communications uh, it could be the the options that that provoke uh, a response, elicit a response from someone. So it may be that uh, someone will respond to uh, a, a message that talks about payment options and uh, help around their finan financial difficulties, as opposed to uh, other communications that that may uh, talk about next steps and, and be a little bit um, harsher in in its in its approach. Um, also actual channels that you use as well. So the modality of the channel, whether it be um, an SMS or a WhatsApp message or, or an app, app push message and, and uh, the list goes on on that front. And then again, there is, there is timing. So uh, it may be that based on um, certain work hours, uh, it could be based on um, other, other, other movements of that particular customer uh, has that it may be that they respond at certain times of the day. Um, when we look at analytics with uh, with our clients and various engagements we work on, um, you know the, the the number of customers that might be responding in the early hours of the morning. They might be responding on a on a Saturday morning uh, are, are are different to what you might see from a a, a normal call center kind of working hour uh, uh, structure. And um, what what we do see where organizations are working really well in this area is uh, I'll give you a few examples of um, you know one organization where they had a lot of outbound contact, but when they actually looked at the, the, the data sets of, of how their uh, customers were interacting and, and what you call kind of uh, self cure, <clears throat> you know, there were a number of different uh, customer segments where they didn't need any contact at all, or they didn't they didn't need an outbound dial, they didn't need the number of SMSs that were being sent out to them over a period of time for them to cure the account. They just needed uh, singular messages which which stated certain things um, about their account status, um, giving them the right options to be able to respond and make the payment in a, in a simple way and those customers would self-cure quickly. And we're seeing some significant reduction in, in outbound contact attempts through that, in essence, a really uh, simple method of analyzing which customers are self-curing and don't need that, that outbound contact. In addition, uh, you know, as opposed to looking at kind of digital first, and in some cases, organizations are pushing uh, pushing it a bit too too hard, but you've got you know a, a number of people in 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 um, in the customer group uh, you know may have some form of uh, digital access issue. It may be that it's more appropriate or um, their preference to communicate with a human and and that can also be seen in inferred preferences. So it may be that they haven't interacted on digital channels for the lifetime of the account, or maybe uh, only a few times have they accessed online banking, for example. So uh, it, it, it's, you know, organizations, and, and we've seen a, a few that do this quite well, where they will use that knowledge and they will promote voice-based communications and options that they can get by calling in um, over over the digital options that would would normally kind of be prominent on the on the outbound uh, communications.
Um, uh, an organization uh, has, has made some good progress with their, with their mobile app customer contact preferences as well. So whilst they were fairly heavy uh, mobile app users, um, you couldn't rely on the outbound app notification to elicit a response from them. Uh, whilst the app notifications were going out, those customers that were on the mobile banking app just simply weren't engaging with the app to go in and make a payment and get their account in order. So other methods were used with those customer, those specific customer segments where they would receive an SMS, which would give them a deep link and take them into the mobile app. Uh, you know, the, the hypothesis is that, that those customers have uh, suppress their notifications, whether it be the notification on their screen when it's in lock mode, or it might be the little red uh, dot on the app. They, you know, some people uh, take those off uh, for their for their mental health. I know that I've reduced uh, a lot of the notifications on uh, on on my my phone um, to the to the anger of my friends and families. But um, so uh, you know, there are there are many different uh, ways of, of using data um of of the customer account of the history of the account and how they communicate to then uh, really improve the the, the way that the, the customers can can interact with with uh, both human and and digital uh, channels uh, one organization we've seen with with 65 different types of customer journeys based on uh, the stage of debt um, not only has the, the 65 different journeys they also have um, variants of those journeys. So it may be that there's a, uh, a chatbot journey for when you're uh, in early arrears uh, and you're a certain risk type, but then they've implemented uh, 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 you know, many variants of that chatbot journey to help get the right response from customers when they're in that particular uh, part of the, uh, of, the, of the life cycle of, of collections. Um, moving on to um, uh, choosing uh, voice or or digital. Uh, so, um, when you look at, at, at automation or best suited to inter interaction, over on the left, um, organisations responded back, and we've we've in the in the final re report that we produce, um, which is in, in in draft mode at the moment. Um, there's various uh, graphs and and, and and images around um, the different data points that we've got, and, and one of them is is showing where where organizations have responded back and uh, stated uh, what are the most likely uh, processes that they would that they would automate um, at the leaders in that area as you would expect no surprise um, taking payments um, I think from a, a payments perspective we've seen a, a, a lot of um, uh, development in this area uh, around automation um, you know whether it be uh, continuous payment authority, so providing your card details and giving authorization for that to be a, a repeat payment, um, tokenization and linking the tokenization of, of card details to, to other channels as well. So it may be that I've gone online and I've made a payment uh, for my initial payment installment. Um, I then uh, have provided my card details for, for doing that. The next installment that's due, because I, I pref my preference is not to go on continuous payment authority, because uh, I need a bit more control over my finances. I receive an SMS telling me my 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 second installment is due, and I simply reply to that SMS to to make the payment. So uh, it stopped me from having to manually call back in and, and kind of give those give those payment details. Um, there's generic you know, services that are provided by third party browsers, right? You've got um, a browser pre-fill, which makes it very easy to, to you know, go and, and, and pay online with your Apple ID um, or, or otherwise and select which cards you would like to, to pay from. Um, organizations uh, are starting um, from a collections perspective to implement Apple and some Samsung pay um we're seeing some some growth in in that area um and then um to the to the to the direct debit um payment method you know a lot of organizations will will push hard to to get uh, customers onto direct debit it's a it's a um 
a, a very good way for customers to be able to manage their fin finances, right? Because it, you've got the, the automated payment that comes out um, each month. I've seen some organizations add some flexibility to that as well. So you can receive communications um, about the direct debit that, that is, is going to come out and you've got the ability to move the direct debit to different dates if you need to that, that link more closely to when you receive your uh, employment income or, or benefits income. Uh, so, you know, some, some good developments in the, in the, in the direct debit um, and automated bank transfer payment arena. And we've, we've seen that in different countries. Um, and open banking is is getting more and more traction, certainly from one organization. Uh, they've they've now moved about um, 30 odd percent of their typical debit card payments for customers in arrears across to open banking. So the customer may receive an SMS or it may be a QR code. They hit that hit that link. They're taken straight to their typical mobile banking um, login where they complete uh, you know, their regular authentication and pre-populated are the pay details and the amount they need to pay and they just hit a button to, uh, to make the payment. So um, some interesting stuff going on there. From a, from a customer perspective, you know, the, there is the challenge of uh, are open banking payments significantly different to making a card payment through browser pre-fill you know, there's a question mark there, but certainly from a creditor perspective, the costs of processing payments, uh, you take out all the merchant acquirer fees, and then you also have um, uh, more accuracy around the payment reconciliation as well. So you're not dealing with the, the uh, manual entry of, of customers putting in their, uh, their, their reference numbers. Um, affordability and payment plans. Um, uh, we're seeing organizations um, continue to develop in, in automating affordability and, and plans. Uh, some organizations still have those two processes separate where there might be some automation on affordability uh, through digital web forms, in some cases with open banking or CRA data. Um, but then if you've created your or you've understood your disposable income, you still need to go and set up a plan via another process and um, with evolved organizations we're seeing the linking of the disposable income going straight to presenting some payment plan options to uh, to the to the customer um, you'll see kind of affordability and and uh, payment plans on both sides it was because we had about 50 50 response rate in terms of what you most likely to automate and what do you think is best suited to agent interaction and i Love that because it it goes with with our thoughts, which are you know it isn't all voice or it isn't uh, all digital. The best customer journeys are really ones that are designed for all different types of customers, and there is definitely a demand for people to talk about their affordability over the phone with a human and have help going through that process and be able to talk through their payment plan options when they're in you know in difficult situations. There's also customers over to the left um, that may prefer not to speak to a human and may prefer to share that type of information um, uh, over, over a front end. We've got um, one organization that, that um, we're working with at the moment where um, they're looking into ways where they can anonymize uh, the front end process where customers will go in and put in some affordability information and look at their plan options without having to share any personal information. And I think that's really, great from the anonymity perspective and, and, and helping customers engage that may be um, embarrassed or, or otherwise to to do so. Yako, I'm going to hand over to, uh, to, to you now. Thank you, Russell. Um, I think there was a number of questions that uh, centered around the integration of voice and digital and, and, and some interesting observations and themes emerged from, from that. Um, more than two thirds of respondents encourage customers to speak to an agent while interacting with the digital channel, which I think gets positive and it, and it's, it shows good intent uh, across the board. I think, practically speaking, um, what we've certainly seen 
in in terms of, of of some of the clients that we deal with that process to hand off to customers from digital to agents uh, uh, so that the agents at the right context can sometimes be uh, prone to integration issues typically uh, digital interactions are for most companies still batched into 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 core CRM systems and sometimes can be up to 24 hours. So that seamless transition from a customer perspective, from from integrate from talking to a digital um, or going through a digital channel and then being handed off to a to an agent that sometimes doesn't have the context. Is, is still a, a, a problem for most companies to solve because of that batch processing. And then also many, many chat systems uh, can often go very quickly to human teams and then overload, uh, uh, overload the agent um, um, teams because of the design um, of that specifically linked to outbound campaigns. I think what we've noticed also is that workforce planning uh, technology also is still catching up in terms of of really planning for for that uh, almost digital to analog transition to an agent. That's the one. I think where we've seen, I think it's not a either or. I think we've seen uh, certainly some of our clients have uh, have acknowledged the fact that that. That handover can sometimes be problematic, and we've got a number of clients that um, that do that through a ticketing system, just to make sure that you give the customer the the certainty that the, the issue is being dealt with, even if it's a if it's a callback later, which which is uh, is not ideal in terms of a digital journey. It, it at least closes the gap. Where very often in these journeys we find that you just drop off or you just don't get the service, and that's that's obviously not ideal. Um, it is, I mean, as Russell said earlier, I think, I think it's absolutely imperative that the, um, the digital comms offer customers human support and specifically that uh, digital does not exclude them from getting the right outcomes. And um, I, th I think if you, if you look at the pandemic as a whole, it's actually quite a good uh, testing ground for the readiness of the switch between digital and, and analog and sort of dealing with sometimes very new customer demands in mass very quickly. What we certainly found is that uh, our clients that were um, well advanced on the digital journeys could use those digital channels to communicate to customers really quickly and implement some basic digital solutions quickly. But I think those that had resource flexibility to support that um, weathered the storm much better. And I think ultimately, I mean, resource flexibility might include multi-location sites with different recruitment dynamics, full working from home, strategic outsource partners, the likes, to help you manage those peaks and troughs. But um, Ultimately, uh, you need to be able to respond appropriately with the human touch on the back of any digital comms where appropriate. Um, what was interesting, even though a lot of customers uh, encourage the handoff from a digital to uh, um, an agent channel quite seamlessly, only 20% allowed customers to, to shift to a voice channel. Uh, example that that I can use there very often the tools available to customers for self serve is not available to agents to be able to to uh, do first time call resolution um, while they're talking to somebody. Uh, examples include um, uh, a customer being pressed for time and just wanting to to receive the confirmation whether it's a pay by link or a or a SMS with a with a redirect to an OAM uh, online account management. Apologies, uh, just just switched off there. Um, or whether it's just a redirect to 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 us to another cell file tool. Uh, and then lastly, I think um, the. What was quite interesting, which is it's, it's sort of contradictory to, to, to Russell's earlier point that um, the majority want to automate at least the payment journeys, only 60%. Only 
that do use a mobile app had tailored collections journeys. Um, and that, I suppose, what we're seeing on the back end of that is, is, is really almost two broad categories. Um, it is those app-first organizations that use the app as a primary onboarding tool, um, you know, where it's digital first by design. Um, they normally incorporate that relatively well, but sometimes the handover from digital to person is not often that easy and not resourced appropriately. And then those where the app was later add, added in the digital roadmap uh, sometimes have, have often a very a slower uptake of, of app adoption or for older customers, which means that the commercial rationale to invest and to, and to really um, uh, do those tailored collection journeys is might not be there. And then the last point, which is an overall theme, is uh, – in general, most of the respondents uh, seem to steer customers through predetermined uh, collection strategies and don't really use uh, past customer behavior to tailor that communication strategy. So, Russell, over to you. All right, thanks. Thanks, Yako. So, um, really good really good points there and and uh, like you say you know we, we, we get we get different responses um, from different different uh, customer groups different industries and it's it's interesting to see some of the contradictions that that, that come out even even in um, uh, the, the, the same organization where uh, they really have a drive to move into a certain direction but the the actual um, journeys and, and, and the way that the, the, the systems are working with the operation just aren't exhibiting that and they're, they're still early on the in, on the journey in, in developing developing that that out um, so uh, we've we've given a, a, a few a few data points um, here I think what what um, we'd like to do is is give you the option to um, participate in the in the survey we're keeping it keeping it open for uh, a few more few more days and um, we're going to be sending out this link um, after the uh, after the webinar so you can hit the link it should take you probably you know 10 or 15 minutes to complete the survey uh, you can contact me directly if you've got any questions but once you've completed the survey and our report is uh, complete which we're expecting to do in the next two to three weeks uh, we'll be we'll be sending that that out to you. So that will be in the form of a, probably about a twenty page uh, report, which will have um, all the output um, from the survey and also commentary around uh, different different um, topics that, that are within within the report. So uh, free report, ten minutes of your time. Please um, get involved because uh, the more responses we get, the better the quality of the uh, the output. Uh, and as I said, we've got thirty organisations um, so far. Um, we've got uh, a few questions that have come in. I think we'll we'll probably run out of time to, to answer all of those. Um, I'll I'll give a, a stab at one of them now. So uh, we've got one question, which is for mobile um, app journeys. Um, uh, what what organisations um, uh, what can they do to secure the investment, bearing in mind that their customer uh, services roadmap might be taking up uh, the majority of um, the development. Um, I think organizations that are struggling to get collection journeys into their mobile app uh, really need to uh, focus on impairment benefits in, in many cases, certainly from a, a, a financial services organization. The business case benefits around reducing impairment can be significant through digital development. And I also think um, ring fencing a team off the back of that um, business case so they can develop for the for the collections team uh, work on the app is is required to get to get the type of capability that's uh, required. I think we'll circulate the other questions. Um, otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll we'll run out of time. Um, Mark, over over to you. Uh, thank you, Russell. Thank you, Yako. Yes, uh, just to confirm, we can um, provide the answers to any questions that have been submitted along with the webinar um, afterwards. So please keep submitting them um, if if you have any. Um, because we are short of time, I am going to 
draw this to a close. So I'd like to thank both Yako and Russell very much for their time today. Uh, I'd like to remind everyone that this webinar will be listed on our website from tomorrow if you'd like to listen again or to recommend it to any colleagues who couldn't make it today. Also, just before you go, we'd appreciate it if you could take a few seconds to give a little bit of feedback in the relevant area provided. Once again, thank you all for your time today and goodbye. <laughs>